Welcome to Dark Aspects Mini, which stands for Damn, that's a lot of Dark Aspects. In the second part of my coverage for this game, I mentioned that I hadn't finished it 100% yet. So I was expecting to find maybe a few more things to talk about that could just be pinned as a comment. But as I was taking notes on this journey to true completion, one screenshot of a relevant bit turned into five, which then turned into ten. So I threw my hands up, dropping my switch in the process, and said, you know what? It'd be more fun to make a supplementary video. So here is the result, a bite-sized dark aspects, because I really wanted to show off all the extra stuff. Really quickly before we start, my next feature-length Dark Aspects will still be a remake of my first video on Earthbound, but that is going to still be a while because it's a big project, and I'm going to be very busy these next several months. I want to give Earthbound absolute care in covering every possible facet, but I'm also getting married in September, and my day job as a photographer is going to be picking up again, so my free time will be sapped. My goal with the channel is to upload every other Sunday, but just know that I will probably be putting out some lesser projects first before tackling that Kraken of an episode. With all that out of the way though, please enjoy this half episode on the Origami King, under the presumption that you've watched the others, of course. So the first line of interest for today can be seen aboard the Princess Peach liner, after saving it from the paper Macho Goober Blooper. In the context of proposing a toast on a luxurious cruise with fanciful dining, it's suggested that the drink here is some sort of wine. However, this particular toad assures players that it is instead family-friendly fruit juice, poking fun at the many ways in which otherwise obviously alcoholic beverages are censored in children's media. On the same ship, too, this toad is causing a commotion by running around naked, which doesn't seem to be a problem for some passengers. This one even likes it. Speaking of suggestive themes, we have yet another appearance by Birdo, perked up from the same spring that can restore a shriveled mushroom. She can be found in the final coffee shop you're likely to visit, which oddly seems to only serve black coffee straight. I thought it was funny because there's nothing special about this place. Nobody has anything to say, and unlike all orders from the Minion cafes throughout the world, this drink doesn't even restore Mario's health. What's the point then? Well, the trick is to not drink ten cups in a row. You're instead supposed to decline the barista's offer of something ordinary, and sit back for something strange instead. When the lights go out, an all-familiar sax theme begins to bellow, as Birdo is lowered from the ceiling. The once stoic snippets start whistling, and the flirtatious star blows a kiss into Mario's empty cup. And he drinks it without any coffee, just one hearty helping of Birdo's love. Apparently it makes the other customers jealous. Besides a couple of similarly sensual descriptions for collectibles in the museum, there are a handful of eye-popping ones. What honestly surprised me is the one for the huge rock Bobby sacrificed himself to destroy, which ends by reading, Rip in pieces, sweet the bomb. Thanks for reminding us that his body was blown apart, Nintendo. Even Bobby's model references his death, stating he had plenty of gumption and explode toitiveness. Yep, he sure did. The Earth Velemental Relief is described here as being crafted with love and fear by Koopa Troopas. Fear, huh? Are they scared of their design being unworthy? And if so, do they fear divine punishment for not serving well enough? Though it isn't by a god, one major character who has had to face retribution is Captain T. Ode, captured and imprisoned in a block of ice by King Shroomsis for stealing Shangri Spa's submarine. The captain's bio reiterates a freaky fate of being frozen for all of eternity, which very well could have been the case had he not been discovered. That's about all of the relevant content here, but before we leave the museum, I want to again shine a spotlight on the shadowy cutout soldiers towards the end of the game, to talk about an eerie inscription taking their unsettling nature to another level. They're described as, quote, a set of soulless minions created by scissors. They have no faces, no feelings, and no fear, unquote. 
stepping outside from that nightmare in a similar vein to Olivia, mentioning how it's sad to think about how a villain's art was really good, a parallel to how respected talents in our world aren't always decent people, this Toad talks about how streamers, as in the literal paper streamers King Ollie used to steal away Peach's castle, haven't had the best reputation lately. This could have been written with a double meaning in response to certain internet streamers, but it could absolutely just be a coincidence. The last topic of today though comes from commenter Matthew, reminding me that in the very beginning of this game, Olivia had said something rather morbid. After addressing the sadness of minions transformed into folded soldiers, who must be battled and cannot be saved, she oddly reacts to their exploding into confetti by comparing it to a party. Making the best out of a bad situation? Hey, we have to fight them, but at least it looks cool when they go out with a bang. That's all I had for this damn Dark Aspects Mini, everyone. We've likely covered all the really interesting stuff, but this will be the new home for any additional discoveries in the Origami King. Since I've now played through the game fully, I likely won't be adding anything unless it's brought to my attention, so please let me know in the comments. I'd also like to hear what you all thought of this new format for the show, as a sort of follow-up for any full episodes I put out. I think it could be a great way to engage the community and cover anything I may have missed, but I'd like to read what you all think. Thank you for watching everyone, and as always, I'll see you next time.